Think of your goodness. Gotta praise your name. Here's what I said. Thank you, Lord. One more day. For one more day. One more day. Lord, you've been good to me. One more day. For one more day. One more day. I said thank you. 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 Oh, so, one more day. From all hurt and harm. Lord, you kept me safe in the cradle of your arms. Lord, I want you to know that I won't complain. Every time I think of your goodness, I gotta praise your name. Here's what I said. Thank you, Lord. One more day. Thank you, Lord. One more day. Lord, you've been mighty good to me. One more day. For one more day. One more day. I said thank you. 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 Oh, one more day. One more day. Put a roof over my head. One more day. One more day. Can you say one, 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 one? One more day. One, no, one, one, one. One more day. One more day, Jesus. One more day. Yes. Oh, yeah. One more day. Can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. One more day. Did he keep you? Oh, yeah. One more day. 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 I said thank you. 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 Lord, you bless me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, you kept me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. One more day. One more day.
You ready, CJ? today into tomorrow I thank you for one more day they said I wasn't going to make it they said I'd never get over but I'm glad uh, that I got over because you love me I'm glad I got over because you cared about me I'm glad I got over because you watched over me you gave me one more day to tell you I love you. You gave me one more day to praise your name. You gave me one more day to say thank you, Jesus. You gave me one more day to lift up your name, to glorify you, to say, Lord, I thank you for all you've done. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for watching over my family. I thank you for healing my body. Lord, one more day. Hallelujah. Somebody didn't make it to today. Hallelujah. We need to thank God for waking us up this morning. He didn't have to do it, but he did. We need to thank God for putting the food on our table. He didn't have to do it, but he did. There's so many people, and we see them that are walking around and don't have a roof over their head or food to eat. But I thank God for watching over us and supplying our need. Amen. See, God is a good God. Because in spite of who you are, in spite of what you've already done, God still loves you. And he's got his two friends, grace and mercy. Hallelujah. To watch over you. Somebody know what I know. Somebody feel what I feel. Hallelujah. To know that there's a God in your life. Mm. that not only takes care of you but takes care of your family hallelujah before I get started I want to send a prayer out to brother Lee Madison is he still in the hospital Marsha is he home he's home praise God praise God praise God we've been praying for him we have another lady that some of you haven't really met but she's a 
a supporter of our church. She sends in her tithes every month. She lives in Deschel, Ohio. Her name is Denise Perkey. Uh, she fell yesterday, broke her wrist, uh, punctured her rib, and she's in the hospital in Finley, Ohio. So, Denise, if you're watching, your sister, Jody, if you're watching, you're on our prayer list and we're praying for you. It's good to see the mothers that are here today. I know they didn't always feel well, but I get a little extra energy when I see your faces in the place. I love my mothers, and I want to thank the mothers for praying for me. When you're sick for two months, and if you've never been sick that long, you don't understand, but when you're sick for that long, you know that there's some people praying for you. Mother Ingram is something special, though. She would text me or my wife like every other day. I want to say, who's that on the phone? Because she cut my phone privileges off. And I said, that's Mother Ingram texting me. She said, that's okay. If Mother Ingram's texting you, it's okay. And all the phone calls and all the cards and all the texts, I appreciate so much. I'm so happy to be back in the pulpit again. Uh, and uh, I can hardly contain myself at times, but uh, I don't ever want to be sick like that again. And I got watchdogs all around the church to make sure I don't now. <laughs> uh, but we thank God for his grace and his mercy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you've done in this place thus far. We know that your presence is already here. Someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to have some doors open in their life today simply because they came to see you in this place. I ask, oh God, that whatever need be met, that you meet it. That every void that needs to be filled, that you fill it. That you lift up every bow down head because somebody in this place is going through something that we know nothing about. But I'm glad that you know all about it. And maybe they haven't had their prayers answered yet. But let them know that they have a special order. And it takes a little longer for special orders. Lord, we ask you to give me preaching power. That I may preach your word with power. That someone might know that you're still God. And come running to you saying, what must I do to be saved? It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Let the church say amen. I thank God for our band and our praise team. We have the best band and the best praise team in the city, bar none. I will put them up against anybody. And there's any evidence that you might want to understand that. Most people try to get these band members to go play in their gigs and do stuff for them because they're so good. But I'm thankful that we have them. And what's my motto to little Resurrection is the best kept secret in Toledo. But people are starting to find out who we are. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm glad I'm sitting next to you today. But be careful because I'm a worshiper. So I hope you don't mind when I scream or when I shout. And sometimes when I get a little loud with my amens, but feel welcome to join in with me as we praise God. Now, if you're sitting next to a worshiper, just join in with them. If they start dancing, if they start shouting, just get up and dance with them. It's okay. Nobody's going to judge you up in here, up in here. Amen. I want to thank God for any guests that we have today. Feel free to enjoy yourself in the Lord. Amen. I'm, I'm not a pastor that's by tradition. We come here to praise God. That's it. We come here to worship God. That's it. I'm going to give you a word that maybe you can go with today, but I want everybody to understand we are here in this place to give God praise and to give him worship. So no silent saints in the sanctuary. If you never heard me before, Remember this, if I say something that makes sense, 
Say, Lord, amen. If I say something that sounds a little crazy and believe me, sometimes I really do. Say, Lord, help him. At least you're saying something and talking back to me. Am I right, Mother Glover? Mother Glover say, Lord, help him all the time. Amen. Look in the book of Mark, the 10th chapter, starting in the 46th verse. Mark 10 and 46. Hallelujah. If you find it, please stand for the reading of his word. Get out your iPhone, your iPad, and prayerfully even your Bibles. Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 46. And I got the living translation, so it may read a little different than yours. Amen. 46 says, Then they reached Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus! Son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him, but he only shouted louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. You may be seated. May God be glorified. May the saints be edified. May the sinners be justified. And may the devil be horrified. Amen. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was nearby, he shouted, Son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, they said. But he only shouted louder. The more they said, be quiet, be quiet, the louder he got. The more they told him to shut up, the more he spoke up. And that's a word to somebody. Sometimes you can't let other people hold you back from getting close to your God. Some people can't hold you back from shouting God's name and saying, thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody up in here that ain't afraid to say, thank you, Jesus? Tell your neighbor, thank you, Jesus, for all he's done. Thank you, Jesus, because I know you took care of me. The more he shouted, the more they told him to shut up. But he shouted, son of David, have mercy on me. Shut up, they said. But he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. You're not too shy. Tell your neighbor, excuse me, but I need Jesus. For a subject that asked the subject, excuse me, but I need Jesus. Now you think back to yesterday and that person, or two days ago, that person you cussed out. I want you to go back to them and say, excuse me. I didn't mean to cuss you out, but I need Jesus. Your finances have been short and the money is kind of tight. Just say, excuse me, but I need Jesus. Your relationships may be in a little trouble. Just tell your significant other, excuse me, but I really need Jesus. Been sick. And I know about being sick. And I even think I told my wife, I said, honey, I need Jesus. Co-workers got you frustrated. You want to go off. Just say to yourself, excuse me, but I need Jesus. Some chokes first, church folk done got on your nerves. And sometimes they do. Go ahead and go up to them and say, excuse me, I'm sorry, but I just need Jesus. Whenever someone goes into a school and shoots children, it's indicative of the fact that we need Jesus. Whenever you can go shopping and get hit on the head by a gun and robbed, we need Jesus. Whenever little children can be snatched and kidnapped in front of family, it's indicative of the fact that we need Jesus. Whenever a brother can get shot just walking down the street or sitting in the car, we need Jesus. Whenever there's a politician in Washington or in the city that cares less about this country and the city than himself, we need Jesus. And we're blessed to have a politician in the audience today. Brother Strong, we'll let him say a few words at the end, but I believe he's somebody that actually cares about people. 
When the devil is trying to kill my family, mess with my spirit and bother my mind, lean on somebody and say, excuse me, but we need Jesus. Speaking on needing Jesus, there's this brother in this text that really needs Jesus. It's a cold-blooded story. The reality is right away this brother moves from frustration to liberation, from degradation to emancipation, just because he had one encounter with a precious Palestinian named Jesus. The Bible says this brother, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was sitting by the road. The Bible says a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, where is he at? He's on the side of the road. Right away, three things leap out of this text. The text tells you three things. His physical condition, his genealogy, and his geography. His physical condition, the brother can't see. He's blind. Genealogy, he's the son of Timaeus. In geography, he's chilling on the side of the road. One more time. His condition, he can't see. His genealogy, he's, a son, he's Timaeus, his baby boy. And then we see his geography, he's sitting on the side of the road. And by the way, his daddy, Timaeus, his daddy's name means defiled. So he comes from a foul family. He can't see. He broke. And he blind. There's a whole lot going on with this man. I guess I got a question to all the smart people here. I got a question for you all. Is he blind because he broke? Or is he broke because he blind? Well, I don't hear nobody. Is he blind because he broke? Or is he broke because he's blind? I mean, if you could see, if he could see, would he then have more money or access to resources? Or did he lose the resources because he couldn't see? Is he blind because he's broke? Or is he broke because he's blind? Y'all pray with me today. I'm I'm going somewhere. My question to you today is, are you broke because you're blind? Are you low on resources, low on blessings, struggling with life because you're blind to what God is telling you? Or you get that one on the way home. Or are you blind because you're broke? Blind because your spirit has been broken by the enemy, some church member, some family situation. Therefore, you can't see Jesus for yourself. Oh, I'm Don't get it on the way. Get that one right now. I mean, let's get real today. Can we get real today? Can I get real with you? The brother is on the side of the road, and the text says he heard about Jesus. When he heard about Jesus, the Bible says he started making noise. He started shouting Jesus. Now, sometime in church, I can't keep people to wave their hand. Won't say amen. Won't say hallelujah. If I twist the arm, they'll say Lord, thank you. Even though they got so much to thank God for. Even though they got so much to give God glory to. Even though they got so much to praise God for. It's hard for somebody to open up their mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. Can I get ten people in here just willing to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You've been good to me. Thank you, Jesus. You walk with me. Thank you, Jesus. You talk to me. Thank you, Jesus. You tell me I belong to you. Watch this. Watch this. I ain't going to be long, I promise. He can't see. He broke. He comes from a defiled daddy, but yet the text says, when he heard. Oh, y'all miss y'all shot. Wait a minute. His sight don't work, but his hearing does. And maybe some would say that because he couldn't see, his hearing is more sensitive. Amen. Diana, wave your hand. Diana's blind. She's, her sight is not as good as it should be. But I tell you what, her hearing is outstanding. Am I right? When some things you lose, the other things get stronger. Amen. So, He's more sensitive to hearing. I wonder what God took from you to make you hear just a little bit better. Oh, don't get that. Don't get that on the way home. I wonder what God had to do to you to get you to listen to him just a little bit closer. I wonder what God had to do to you 
to wake you up and see what he had in store for you. Somebody needs to wake up, open up their eyes, and see what God is trying to do for you in your life. What did he have to do to get you to see? What did he have to do to get your attention? What did he have to do to lift you up out of the muck and mire that you used to be in? I just said something. Don't get it on the way home. I wonder who had to leave you. I wonder how broke you had to get. I wonder what happened on the job. I wonder how many drugs it took. I wonder how much alcohol you had to drink. I wonder what church hurt you. What lie was told on you. Where the knife had to go. What you had to go through. To make your listening most sensitive to what God was trying to tell you. Is there anybody here like me? That's not 18 anymore. And now you're trying to hear more than you talk. I, I, I went over three people's head, but that's okay. Because reality is the older you get, the less you talk and the more you listen. I told a young man earlier this week, I said, you need to get into the mode where you don't talk so much and you start listening to what people are trying to tell you because you're missing it. You don't want to make no move. Until God tells you to move. Is there anybody here that's been through enough stuff that now your hearing is more sensitive? You hear God better. You respond to God better. Your hearing is in tune with God because of what you've been through. You value your new relationship with God more than the old one. You realize that the divorce was at least 1% your fault. You realize that some of the things you damaged was because you didn't hear what God's had to say enough. The Bible says that when he heard about Jesus, the reality is his hearing is more sensitive because his eyes don't work at all. So he can't see, but my man sure can hear. So even though he can't see Mother Ingram, he's maximizing his other senses. Since one thing don't work, He's making the other thing work more. And I'm sorry, you missed my point. I'm, I'm going to go back and remind you. Tell your neighbor, use what you got. I wish I had somebody here that may not have what everybody else has, but that which God has given you, you're going to maximize your potential. You're going to live into your purpose. You're going to live into what God has already prepared and stay ahead of you. You're going to live up to what God wants you to be because God got more in store for you than you can ever imagine. God got stuff sitting up in heaven waiting to pour down on you, but he's just waiting for you to get in step. He's waiting for you to listen to his call. He's waiting for you to listen to the spirit that he put inside of you so you can claim all the victory so you can claim all the blessing so you can claim all the things that God set up for you so you can claim everything I wish I had somebody here that may not have what everybody else has but that which God has given you you're not going to let it waste you're going to maximize your potential a long time ago I figured out I wasn't going to be the, an NBA player, Brother Philip. First of all, I was too short. I was like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, I could dribble real good. I had a nice hook shot. But I knew my growth wasn't going to be tall enough to be. I couldn't even make Scott's team. I was too little. Amen. But I tried. And I was in the area where Truman Clater was playing, and Truman was a all-American. It's a true story. I played one-on-one -on -one with Truman Clayton. He played for the University of Kentucky, won a national championship. I played one-on-one -on -one for him in high school. He beat me 21 to 2. I was talking smack the whole time because I talk a lot of smack. He took me to the hole every time. Baseline, he took me. He did jumpers in my face, and he talked trash, and I talked trash. So I realized then that the NBA might not be my choice for the future. But I understood that 
one thing I figured out that I was a pretty good communicator. I knew how to talk to people. I was good with people. I figured out that I liked helping people, and my mind moves kind of quick, and I think quickly, so I realized I wasn't going to be going to the NBA, but something said to me, just use what you got. Can I get a witness? And the reality is, you may not have what your neighbor has, but you got something that God has given you, something that nobody else has but you, because you are special, and God has designed you special for a certain purpose. He knew before you were born who you were going to be. He knew before you were born what he wanted you to do. The reality is, we got to catch up to God. And if something that God put in you is going to pay you, give you peace, and you don't need no money, you just need an idea. And God is about to give you an idea to take you to the next level. The Bible says when he heard, so the first thing that leaps out is the man's situation. His situation is he cannot see. His situation is that he needs others to provide for him because he is financially depleted. He got physical ailments. He had all types of injuries. We see the man's situation. The Bible says he began to call on the name of Jesus. Has anybody ever called Jesus? I called him just this morning. Hallelujah. I call Jesus every day. He's a, that's a daily call I make. I call him when I get up in the morning. I call him late at night. I call him when I'm in my car. I call Jesus. He began to call in the name of Jesus. Not only do we see the man's situation, but we see the crowd's irritation. Because the Bible says the louder he got, the more they told him to shut up. The louder he got, and y'all miss y'all shout, the louder he got, the more they wanted him to be quiet. Maybe I'm crazy, but something dawned on me that told him to be quiet. But everybody that was telling him to shut up, they could already see. They didn't have a problem. They could see. Amen. And the reality is, Sometimes we can't be quiet when it comes to calling on God. Amen. And, and you can't worry about who's telling you to shut up. You can't worry about who's telling you, why you got to go to church every Sunday? Why you got to be there? And you tell them, because I know where God lives. And I know what I need from God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what you say. That's my response. I know where God lives and I know what I need from God, so I'm going to show up on Sunday to get my blessing. Now, I know we got some people up in here, up in here, that ain't afraid to shout. And if somebody tells you to shut up, you just get a little louder. So let's stand on our feet and give God some praise. Can you praise him with me? And let's worship him today. Just say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you glory. Lord, I thank you for all you've done. Can we just praise him right now? Don't be afraid to give a good shout right now. And say, Lord, I need you in my life. Lord, I give you grace and mercy. Lord, I know that nobody like you. Nobody can do what you can do. Lord, we praise your name. We lift up your name. We know that nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you, God. Hallelujah. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus, and all he's done for me, if God has made a way for you, can you open up your mouth and give God praise in a shout? When the Steelers win, you shout. When the Cowboys win, I know y'all shout. Let's give God a Holy Ghost praise. He said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Lean on somebody and say, all I got is a holler. I'm catching hell every day of my life. I got money issues, man issues, job issues. I got a wife that don't speak life, a father that didn't bother, a mother that don't cover, a child too wild. So all I got is a holler. All I got is a praise. All I can say is thank you. Hallelujah. I'm almost through, I promise. Not only do we see the man's situation and the crowd's irritation, we see his determination. Because the more they said shut up, the louder he got. Everybody that's been forgiven much should shout much. Jesus, son of David, 
Jesus, son of David. Jesus, son of David. When he calls him, in essence, he's calling him son of God. He's really calling him the Messiah. Now, all other church folk don't believe that Christ is a Savior. Now, he's the one that can't supposedly see. But the reality is, all blindness ain't optical. Oh, somebody going to get that one on the way home. You better capture that one and unpack that one for traveling. All blindness ain't optical. Man, just because you have your eyes don't mean you can see. If you could see, then you wouldn't have dated that fool that you dated. If you could see, then you would be connected to your church. If you could see, then you would come out of the mess you're in and submit and humble yourself to God. If you could see, then you wouldn't fall for people that mean you harm. The reality is you may not have all the money that you want yet, but why don't you praise God that you can see what God has in store for you? The reality is some people don't like you because they liked you better when you were blind. The, the brother broke up with you because your sight was intimidating. The reason your friends are mad at you is because you can see through their mess now. The reason they don't want you to be around is because you can peep their game now that they're trying to pull on you. They liked you better when you were good in bed and messing with your head. And you couldn't see. Tell your neighbor, I can see clearly now. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Come on, let's praise him that you got your sight back. Praise him that you can see clearly now. Praise him that you got your vision back. Praise him for a new focus now. My brothers, don't they women that can see. They want you to be needy and have low self-esteem. But once you get your vision, you can see everything that they try to do against your life. All blindness ain't optical. Lastly, we see the Savior's invitation. The next verse says, Jesus says, tell him to come here. The Bible says he jumped up. And he ran for his life. Isn't it time for you to run for your life? Run from your addiction. Run from your pain. Run from your fears. Run from the devil's sting. Run from poisonous people. Run from heartache. Run from bad thoughts, family issues. Run from your past. Run from your flesh. Run from doing the same thing over and over again. And run to someone who can save you from yourself. And run to God. Run to God who can open your eyes. Who can hear your call. Who won't give up on you. Who will wipe your tears away. Who will put his arms around you. And all you have to do is say, excuse me, but I need Jesus. I need Jesus because he died for me. I need Jesus because he went to Calvary. I need Jesus because he let them put the nails in his hands and the nails in his feet. I need Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I know that he died for my sins and he died for your sins. I need Jesus because some things I can't do for myself. I need Jesus because I know that Jesus will speak to me. I know that Jesus will put his arms around me. I know that Jesus will tell me that I belong to him. And tell me that everything, everything is going to be all right. 
Tell your neighbor, excuse me, but I need Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes we got to put aside stuff in our life and just understand Jesus is waiting for us to come to him. He's waiting for us to say, Jesus, I need you. Bartimaeus heard about Jesus, and he came to find Jesus. And he knew that if he got to Jesus, Jesus might be able to heal him. I don't know what healing you need, because all healing ain't physical. Some people need some wounds that are healed from years past. Wounds that were opened by family or friends, or sometimes even a church. But I'm a living witness that God can renew your strength. He can lift you up when you're broken. And he can encourage you. All you got to do is say, excuse me, but I need Jesus. Hallelujah. The doors of the church is open. By letter, candidate for baptism. Christian experience. Don't remain blind. Let God open up your eyes to a brand new revelation. Let him open up your eyes to a brand new day. I'm a living witness that if you trust God, there is nothing that he won't supply. Is there one here today? Won't you trust him? Give God and let him be a part of your life. Ask him to come in. And I promise you, he will bless you. There's someone watching virtually today. And you haven't given your life to God. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. But I heard about your amazing grace. Lord, come into my heart. Be my personal savior. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus was your son. That he came down in the form of man. And he died on the cross. But I also believe that the third day, he got up with all power in his hands. If you said those words, you shall be saved. We see there are none here today. But there's plenty good room in my Father's kingdom. Amen. I come to have the hospitality committee come to welcome guests. Amen. And, and then we're going to have a word from the city council candidate, Brother Sean Strong. He just want to have a few words. He's not here to make a speech and just introduce himself to the public. Amen. Y'all come on up here. Amen. Welcome my guests. Good morning, everyone. At this time, we will ask for all of our um, visitors to please stand, state your name, church home, and if um, someone invited you today, if you would please mention who invited you today. Please, don't be shy. Hallelujah. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. I'm truly happy to be here today. First of all, I want to give out an honor to God, who's the head of my life, because God has been good to me, and he's been good to all of us, because he woke us up this morning and started us on our way, and I just thank God today. Um, I want to say I enjoyed the service this morning, the message. It spoke about Jesus healed Bartimaeus. And also, excuse me, I need Jesus. And I enjoyed the service today. And um, I just say that you have a great pastor here, church. Um, 
I, I, I met him through my sister-in-law. I was invited here through my sister-in-law, O.C. Ballard and Sonny Edwards. And I come to you by way of Ebenezer Missionary Baptist Church. My pastor is pa Pastor Jimmy Jordan. And um, I, I'm the church announcer over there. So I did my church announcements, and then I made my way over here because I was invited. Yes, and so I will be back. God bless you all. Good morning, church. My name is Vera Reed. I am Steffi's aunt, her sweetest aunt, her only aunt. <laughs> but I come from Friendship Baptist Church. Pastor, I really enjoyed your mess message this morning. You did a beautiful job. And you know you're right. I need Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah is the highest praise. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My name is Deetra Graham, and I'm a member of the Friendship Baptist Church, Pastor Bishop Dwayne C. Tisdale presiding, and uh, my uh, colleague Chuck, we call him Chuck Hare. Chuck, he uh, invited uh, me and some other staff here, but looked like I'm the only one showed up. <laughs> So I truly enjoyed the services, and I must say, I need God, and I will be back. Greetings, greetings. My name is Rose Burton. I'm here from Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church. My pastor is Raymond G. Bishop, and I'm not really a visitor. I've been before, but I'm here by way of Sister Marilyn Lomas. Good afternoon, everybody. I am not a visitor as well. Um, I'm home for Bulldog Weekend. Go Bulldogs! Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Any dogs in the house? No. <laughs> but I am just here and I'm visiting. I actually now reside in Dallas, Texas. And I'm just home and enjoying the weekend. And my sister Shirley, I talked to her and she said, it's Friends and Family Day. So I said, forget the picnic for a little bit. I got to come and be with family. Hey, Pastor. And all pulpit associates, I'm sorry for not honoring you, and first of all, God as well. I apologize for that. But I'm just home, and I'm just having a good time, and it's just so good to be here. I want to thank my sister and my cousin for inviting me. It's always a pleasure to be here. I don't even call it a, that I'm a visitor. I'm just so happy to be here. I'm happy to be home as well. So enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your evening, the rest of your week, and the rest of your year. Just enjoy yourself. Thank you so much. I am Marquita Rayford. I, I came to church because my granny invited me. She said on the phone, Marquita, don't, don't say I'll never invite you nowhere. So I said, okay, granny, I'm going to come to church. And yes, I'm not ashamed to say, yes, I need Jesus. Bless me the tie that bind our hearts in Christian love. I don't feel like a visitor uh, because of my relationship with family here, your beloved pastor. Again, I greet you from Bethel Cathedral AME Church in Indianapolis, where I'm an associate pastor. We're glad to be here this morning. Uh, we're here with my lovely wife, who's from uh, Toledo, and that's why we're here this morning. May God bless continue you. to bless you, bless you and keep you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. I apologize for missing on you. I'm sorry about that, okay? I'm sorry. I'm glad that everybody came. So I want to welcome you from Restoration Back to Church. We want to welcome you. To Restoration Baptist Church, we welcome you to come on in. Bring your family and friends. Pastor Carter had a word or two. How God's going to bless me and you. Welcome, welcome, where God is first. Welcome, welcome to Restoration 
Uh, I'm going to have uh, Elder Barnes come up and have a word. Uh, all glory to God. So I'm Elder Johnny Barnes from uh, Christian Kingdom Assembly in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, and uh, actually, <laughs> it's a, if, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready, right? They say be ready in season and out of season. So my intentions was just to slip in the back and take a seat. You know, uh, this is a great church and you got a great man of God here. Um, I am not a visitor. I'm home, folk. Because anytime I come here, I'm coming here. You know what I'm saying? This is my home away from home. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when you're rich in God, he gives you a vacation home. You know? So I got a vacation home in several cities. And this is just one of them. So God bless you all. I always love being here. May the grace of God continue to hang over your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Now, I'm going to bring... Brother Strong up, Sean Strong. He's going to be running for city council. And I promise I'd give him a few words to say and introduce himself to the community. Come on up, Brother Strong. Praise the Lord, everyone. Oh, come on. I come from a sanctified church, so you got to do that better than that. Praise the Lord, everyone. It is so good to be here. Honor to your pastor, Pastor Carter, to all of you. Thank you so much for having me. I've enjoyed spending the weekend with you. I was here yesterday for the community cookout. Shout out to the deacons who were the grill masters and to Sister O.C. for putting that together. Um, I enjoyed myself. Uh, I was able to reconnect with some people that I hadn't seen in a while. And I found out that one of my schoolmates, I know it's Bulldog Weekend, but I'm a panther for life. That's right. I got some Panthers in the house, so I'm so glad to be here with you all. My name is Sean Strong. I am running for Toledo City Council District 1. If elected and I have your support, this will be one of the churches in the district that I will represent, and I'd love to be your representative. So many people have asked me, why, as a believer, are you getting involved in the snake pit of politics? And that's simple. Mark 16 tells us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And when you understand the word world in the Greek, it stands for cosmos, which means ordered systems. Government is an ordered system that we have been called to, to be salt and light as Jesus commanded us. And it gives us an opportunity to live out our faith, to bring moral and ethical leadership to city government, to be a voice for marginalized people, and to stand up for what we believe in and let the church be the conscience for the culture. Uh, there are so many things going on in our society right now, so many things happening in our culture, and it is time for the people of God to stand up and to be the conscience of the culture, to be the moral compass, to be that ethical leadership. As you know, even here in our small city of Toledo, Ohio, we've had so many things going on in leadership, and there's been so many people who have come to us and asked us for our support, but have not represented us the way that they should have. There have been people in the mayor's office and on council who said that they would hear our voice and that they would do something for us, but then we find out that we're forgotten about and they tell us once they get in there, they don't need us anymore. I am not that person. I am the person that will come, I will see about you. If you call me, I'm going to find an answer to your problem. And if I don't have an answer, I'm going to be honest with you and let you know I don't have that answer, but I'm going to find it. I don't promise that I can solve all of our problems overnight. And I certainly can't solve them in four years, but I can start. Because I believe the Bible, and the Bible says one plants, one waters, and God gives the increase. And there's some problems that we're facing that will only be solved through generations. I may be the planter, I may be the waterer, but the next generation after me may be the one to see the increase of the work that we do. But I believe that as long as we work together with the Lord as our lead, we can make anything possible. Anything can happen, and we can change our city for good. There's no reason why Toledo cannot be a thriving metropolis as it once was before. We have everything that we need here, and I will stand on that soapbox and say that this is the greatest place to work, to 
live, to play, and to worship. I believe in Toledo. I believe in the ability to do something good if elected, and I would really, really, really love to have your support, Resurrection Baptist Church. So I love you. I thank you. I ask that you keep me in your prayer, and I ask for your support. Again, my name is Sean Strong for City Council District Number 1. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Strong. Uh, and those that don't recognize the name, he is Reverend Rudy Strong's nephew. Amen. Rudy, Reverend Strong is a friend of Resurrection, a uh, good friend of mine. So we're glad and we, we, we want to, people to hear you. Amen. And my experience with, with Brother Strong is that he is, seems to be very honest and very uh, trustworthy. And you can't say that about every politician. So uh, hear what he has to say come election time, and then, uh, and then follow your spirit and follow your heart. Amen. Brother Scott, do you have anything you want to say before we dismiss? Thank you. Give it honor to God. I said in my life to the pastor. I certainly enjoyed the message on today. Yes. To each of you that are here, I thank the Lord for being here. I'm, I was surprised to hear one of our members uh, um, that she's our announcer, and um, our theme for our church uh, at Ebenezer is "Order My Steps." And I, I was telling Pastor if I had sung today, that's what I was going to sing, not knowing that she was here. But uh, Sister Ballard, she is a tremendous uh, member of our church, and we appreciate her so much. I thank God. I'm gonna ask you just before I sit down to. It's in C, order my steps in C. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me and guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. Father, I ask thee to teach me your will. Why you're working, Lord. Help me to be still. Satan is busy, but God, you're real. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. Okay, all right. All right, I'm asking you to please play for my brother, Dr. Amos Woods. My uh, brother, Dr. Amos Woods, he's, uh, they gave, uh, uh, he has stage five cancer. They called the family in on uh, Monday. And they said it'll only be a couple of days where he's living. He was pastoring for almost uh, 50 years, pastoring. So remember him in your prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Scott. We're going to let him finish that song up next Sunday because uh, uh, the time is getting late. I don't want to hold you guys too long. But as you can tell, he, he can sing. Amen. And so we'll be prepared and the band will be prepared and let him have an opportunity to bless us next week. Amen. Amen. All minds are satisfied. Let us stand. We want to thank all of our guests. Ruth chapter 6, thank you. For yesterday, tell your group to thank you very much for serving and helping. 
Amen. All of our guests, thank you for coming. I didn't hit on it earlier, but it is Bulldog Weekend. I, I try not to get into that too much because they get mad at me. All right, here we go. Reach out and touch. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Now may the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you, now, henceforth, and forever. Let every heart sing together. Amen. Please welcome our guests. Shake somebody's hand. Welcome them.